Well, um, first of all, I wish to congratulate on this excellent paper. Uh, and uh, I want to, to stress some points uh, of connection of this paper with the research we are doing here in uh, this academy. Because it seems to me that, uh, Janir, you are stressing the importance of what we call human capital. Confidence between uh, rulers, uh, between the ruling class, the rulers, and the people mm -hmm. is a, a or brotherhood, communities is a strong force. Now we are all concentrated on vaccines and the hope that they will work. And of course, that is good. But before we have struggled against the pandemic uh, through the instruments of identifying the carriers of the infection, of um, limiting the infection and treating the infection. This requires a high level of confidence of people among themselves, requires a, 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 an immediate warning. And uh, we should ask ourselves, did the immediate warning work? It seems it did not work very well. Uh, the uh, Organization of Human Health has shown uh, a certain difficulty in uh, giving immediately the needed information. Second, did we draw the right lessons from Ebola? It seems we did not, at least in Europe, because we did not make um, use of the possibility of limiting, identifying the carriers of the infection and limiting the, uh, the, the lockdown to those who were immediately in contact because we could not identify them. And why didn't we identify them in time? Because there was no confidence, no, no community feeling. There was, um, everybody was more worried about the right to privacy. Of course, there is an, an important uh, um, <coughs> juridical problem. How can we reconcile the right to privacy with the uh, immediate working of these uh, uh, measures? And it is not by chance that they work better in countries that have a stronger community feeling. Nevertheless, New Zealand is an interesting example because New Zealand has a culture very similar to ours. And nevertheless, they did work in New Zealand. So why? You open uh, many fields of research. I don't know whether you can give us already some light on these points and also the other academicians. I think of Pierpaolo Donati uh, and of Stefano Zamani and their insistence on the importance of human capital. This is human capital for health. I, th I think I would point to two things. I would say, first of all, prevention has not been a strength of the Western uh, culture of medicine in recent decades. And experience with zoonotic outbreaks has been uh, absent. And, and so the, the issue that was pointed to, the issue that we need to act fast and that we need to act um, uh, with a very directed uh, goal um, uh, has to be uh, part of the discussion. The New Zealand saw how China acted and recognized the opportunity to act fast and to, um, to prevent the transmission. Michael Baker, the epidemiologist who advised the government from the beginning, um, recognized that there was an opportunity to achieve elimination. He's published multiple papers on this subject. And, and the point of possibility before one can achieve outcome in this context that's one direction, or it's two. One is the prevention, and one is the recognition of opportunity. And, and the third one that I would say indeed to echo your point is the issue of community. In Ebola, it was the community, the door-to-door -door process, the people recognizing the need to act in a shared way. Pandemics are not being stopped by professionals they are being stopped by the community because we see, of course, the experience we know is that most of the action that is needed is by members of the community. So we have to know that the professionals, their responsibility is to inform the community and to empower the community to take action. And this is something that the mathematics says. It is 
you asked about my science, it's the mathematics that points to the community as being the essential actor. And, and finally, the idea of human capital. Um, again, the model of, of, uh, um, of the humanity as an average or as an aggregate, one must really understand that the, the statistical treatment of human beings does not capture the essential nature of individuals. And so we really have to think about it in a different mathematical language. And this is the mathematics that is made possible by the complexity science tools. It is in fact that mathematics that enables one to understand how a complex collective arises out of a unique and diverse individual components. And this is the proper description of society in terms of unique individuals that recognizes that one has to value the individual. We have come around to the fundamental view, which we should have, which is that individuals are ultimately important. Why is each of us here? Why don't we have the same understanding, the same knowledge, the same talents, the same everything, because of the unique distinctions between individuals that make different people good at different things and capable of understanding and knowing different things. And it is by the connection between diverse individuals that we gain strength of the shared understanding, which is much greater than any individual can hold. Okay. So I would like to raise a, a couple of remarks on the presentation by Alexander, which has been very synthetic, but very insightful, and also of Jan Erbar. Uh, the pandemic event uh, has uh, revealed to us a, a major failure, uh, in particular for the intellectual world, namely a double uh, ethical dilemma. The first ethical dilemma is uh, health versus wealth. The debate, should we close, lock down, et cetera, because now this reveals uh, a lack of philosophical foundations. And I am amazed that even philosophers do not raise their voice because that is a patent uh, violation of the Moore laws. Moore wrote that in the year 1003 already principia ethica. In other words, you cannot put on the same level, and so you cannot establish a trade-off between two elements which belong to different levels. Wealth is not at the same level of health, and still people keep on, of course, not to mention Mr. Johnson to remain to Europe, etc., which is ridiculous. How intellectual did not react. They should have said to him, shut up, because you are incompetent, because health and wealth are not at the same level. The second dilemma, and that is perhaps is even more serious, is the lack of a criterion to allocate scarce resources such as respiratory, etc., to people who need them. Because the criterion, which in Europe, as well as in other countries, but we today refer to Europe, is applied in the hospital, is the CALIS. CALIS means quality adjusted life years criterion. Uh, in other words, you have to give the respiratory to the person in need, whose perspectives of recovery and length of a reasonable life is higher. Now, CALIS is a utilitarian criterion. And still, I do not understand why intellectuals, and in this case, physicians, do not realize that in their everyday practice, they adopt a utilitarian criterion when in other cases they say they speak against it. Now, Europe still lack an alternative criteria. I know that in America, in particular Harvard University, they are recently elaborated a new criterion, but in Europe, we keep on being silent. And on the other hand, our physicians, they need uh, to be directed because uh, uh, you cannot, uh, in fact, you know, the, the scandal of Nazareth. Nazareth is a scandal. 
You know that because uh, last year, the government sent to all the people uh, over 70 a piece of paper asking them to sign if they are, were willing to give up to receive treatment if there, is, there was another fellow underneath 70 in need, etc. And what is remarkable, uh, all the answer, all the people said yes. We give up our life in case that there is somebody else, which is that utilitarian calculus, uh, Bentham, <laughs> as we know, has already entered at the level, at the level of common. Person. Finally, a remark to Alexander. You keep on talking about pandemic, but that is not true. What we are witnessing is not a pandemic, it's a syndemic. Syndemic means a synthesis of epidemies. Synthesis. It is. Now, if you read the articles on science, Lancet, the top journals, that is very clearly stated. Because in this case, we have a synthesis of three epidemics, coronavirus, but we have uh, environmental degradation and social inequalities. Yes. Because uh, if we want to, to strive against, we cannot hope to combat against uh, this type of disease only operating on the health side. We have also to operate on the social and also on the, let's say, uh, climate, uh, because deforestation was the cause. And you yeah. need to put four. The, the disaffection of religion. Yes, exactly. Oh. Well, <laughs> you can have as a fourth, epidemic. but it's connected to the second, yeah. the third. Exactly. Second. So, because why people talk about pandemic? Because it pays. Because you treat pandemic only from the point of view of sanitation, about it, which is okay. But in this way, we forget that after all, coronavirus is the result of deforestation yeah. in Southeastern Asia, because coronavirus never existed in this part of the world. Eh? We imported it. And deforestation has something to do with the environment. So syndemic, in my opinion, is the best word to be, which is already entering into the scientific jargon. Eh? Thank you. <laughs> so we have only one minute, but we can make one question very, brief and also a an reply very brief please one half a minute <laughs> right thank you um a question uh, about uh, the vaccines and the global supply of vaccines we know that vaccine is the our best way out of this pandemic because that only that way we can prevent the virus from mutating in uh, in the other parts of the world mm. At the same time, we see that a lot of low-income countries have very low vaccination rates or no access to vaccines. Now, the choke in, uh, in supply is mostly because the intellectual property rights are uh, holding some producers uh, from stepping in and providing uh, much more. That is why a lot of countries of the Global South uh, have uh, applied to the... Sorry, really. Right. This is a very important question. We need to come back in the general discussion. It's a very central question. So we don't have real time to... to, to right, so, so just ask the question, how do we make sure that Europe um, becomes a champion in um, the fight for a full waiver of intellectual property rights and in technology transfer to the countries of Global South? Please. Take the question and, and, and we wait for the play of the question in the general discussion. It's a very important question and, 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 uh, because it's just the time and, and we need to come back here uh, to, to restart at 10.50. So uh, we have 10 minutes, 20 minutes to, to coffee break. Thank you. If we follow the program, this is the program.